Uh, I will be leaving some of the uh, sessions today, uh, well, this this week. And now we are gonna start uh, with a session about debugging. So I'm gonna present my my screen. Uh, Okay, hope you all can see my screen. Yes. Yep, yes. <laughs> Thank you. If you want, you can start the recording. So, okay, we're gonna talk about debugging uh, because uh, these sessions are gonna be a bit more complicated than in the first workshop. So knowing about how to debug the application when it's not working well, it's gonna help us a lot to be successful in the exercises. So here we're gonna see two uh, tools uh, to see to, to debug. The first of all is the uh, Android the Android Studio itself, and the other one is Flipper. So let's go. Uh, first of all, uh, the Android Studio Debugger uh, will have a log cat uh, where you can see all the logging that the uh, Android Skeleton app uh, is logging. And also we're gonna find this button at the top of the Android Studio and pressing that button will uh, let you debug the application. So if you click the debugger, uh, you are going to be able to add also some conditional breakpoints or some breakpoints with a, a dialogue like this one. And then you're going to put this breakpoint here. And when the debugging comes to this line, it's going to start. It's going to stop, sorry. <laughs> and then you're going to have a view like this one. Uh, with a lot of uh, buttons, I'm gonna explain you in a bit. So this one is to resume your program. So if it's stopped in one line, you can resume it by clicking here and you can stop the application with that button. So if you want to show where the execution point is, you can click here and you will see the line where, the, where you attach the breakpoint. This one is to step over. So you're gonna go to the next uh, line. In this one, you're gonna go inside this method. So you're gonna, in this sample, you're gonna go inside the method track entity instance query. With this one, you're gonna step out to the parent method. And with this one, you can run to the cursor. So if you put a cursor, in one line and you click that one, uh, the application is gonna uh, run till it finds the cursor. And here you're gonna see all the variables at the very same moment that uh, you stop the, the application. Also, you have an expression evaluator here, which is very uh, util. If you uh, click in the evaluate expression, you can write here some fragments of code and evaluating without uh, losing the, the workflow in your application. So you can debug and try with different filters or different expressions here and click in the evaluate button. If you wanna know more about how to do debug with Android Studio, you can check this link here and you can go there. Now uh, I'm gonna talk a bit about the other tool I talked about before. It's Flipper. Flipper is an utility uh, created by Facebook that provides uh, the banking capabilities uh, for Android applications with a desktop interface, which is pretty simple. Um, from the SDK, uh, we are gonna uh, we want to you you to use Flipper instead Android Studio uh, for 
checking the database and the network interface because uh, it's gonna be quicker. And if your uh, laptop is not that, ha have not that capabilities, it's gonna be easy to use for you. So uh, I recommend you to use Flipper instead, the Android Studio, but I'm gonna explain you both. So first of all, for Flipper, you have the download links here. And in case you didn't download it now, you didn't download it yet. And just a reminder, uh, you have these requirements. You have to, to have installed OpenSSL, Watchman, and the Android SDK. The Android SDK will be installed if you have installed uh, the Android Studio toolkit. So here you have uh, a link uh, to get in start with Flipper. And here are some uh, installation steps to install Flipper in your app. We don't have to do these steps now because uh, the Android Skeleton app uh, have already installed Flipper. But you can check these uh, installation steps in case you want to install a Flipper in your application. Also, you have here the documentations of how to do it uh, correctly. Uh, so how to check that uh, Flipper is working? Uh, you're gonna have to do that. Uh, you have to go to the, to the desktop application and check that uh, Flipper finds the DHS2 skeleton app. And also that you have enabled the database layout and network plugins because these are the three plugins we are gonna use. Uh, the network plugin is gonna look something like that. So here you select the, the network plugin and you're gonna see all the requests and all the traffic that your application is having. And if you go to the database uh, plugin, you're gonna be able to select some of the tables and check all the data that are on the database. Also, you can see the, the logs here, uh, all the logs that uh, your application is logging by the log uh, plugin. What about if you want to do all of this in Android Studio? So we suggest you to use a Flipper, but in case that you have, haven't installed or you cannot install for any reason, you can do the same with Android Studio. Here at the very bottom, uh, you will have the database inspector button. So if you click it, you're gonna see the uh, as a, a view similar that uh, the one on Flipper with all the database uh, tables and all the information that the tables contain. Uh, also, you have this profiler uh, plugin that you can use if you want to inspect your network. So once you click on the plugin, you're gonna see something like that. And then you have to uh, click on network. You can see here CPU, memory, network, and energy. We want to check the network. So uh, we're gonna click on the network section. And then we can use the plus and less zoom buttons that are here on the top. And then uh, we are gonna uh, select the window that we want to check the API calls and see the, all the calls. Again, the profiler network uh, has a bit of, it consumes like a lot of memory of your computer for that reason, I would suggest you to uh, stop the, the lock cut with a, a stop button that's here in case you are not using it. And I'm gonna show you a quick demo of everything that I just explained. So here uh, you can see that we have the, the Skeleton app up and running, and this is Android Studio. So I just uh, started the 
the debugger so I don't have to do it uh, again. And this one is Flipper. So first of all, uh, here in the setup doctor, you can see that I have installed the OpenSSL, Watchman, and SDK. You can check it here, clicking by clicking the doctor. I didn't have the iOS thing because I'm running an Android in Windows. Uh, here, I have the Skeleton app connected, and here I can see the databases. I can check, I, I can switch between the plugins. If I go to the databases, I can click the, that, the that data tab and then select a table. For example, you can see here the layout sets, here are the, um, I don't know, the filters, etc. Also, you can see the structure of each uh, table. So here you see that you have the ID, the code name, display name, etc. And also you can perform some queries here. If you want, uh, you can select and perform queries here and you're gonna see here the result. Also, uh, if you click in one of the rows, for example, if I go to the, the program one uh, here, this is the program table. You can click in one row and you can go here in the left menu and you can edit the, the data. So if you want to make some editing, you can click edit here and maybe change the display name here. For example, I can just put my name, Marcus here, and save. So after that, if I come here and I go to the to my programs, I can see that here uh, the name of the program is Marcos now because I changed it. Also, we have the the network. I'm gonna make it a bit smaller. So here in the network, I if I sing, for example, the data, I will see here some of the, I don't know what's not working now. Uh, maybe because uh, there is no a new information. Yeah, I, I think so. Because uh, we are using the last updated uh, query. So wait a second. Just have to start the application again. Sorry, sorry for that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, here I can, I'm gonna clear the data, wipe all the data and try to sync the metadata. I'm so sorry, it's not working now, uh, but it should work. If I don't know what's happening right now, it worked all the time. Oh, well, uh, so sorry for that. <laughs> I'm gonna uh, close the application now. I'm gonna see, uh, so you how you can do the same in the under studio. You can click here in the database inspector. And um, if you launch the application, uh, you can uh, come here and select a process here and then select the Android Skeleton app. So once you do that, you're gonna, you're gonna see here all the tables and by clicking here, for example, in the, in the same table as before, so the program table, you're gonna see that here in the display name is the name Marcos, and you can also edit it here directly. Campus, for example. And so if I come here again, you can see that uh, the display name is updated and you can see the, the name. Also for the profiler, it's the same in the, in the network. You can come here, come to the network, 
select a rant. So I select everything. And then I'm going to sync the metadata. And I think it's the same problem as before. Maybe. I don't know what I can see this login here. Uh, I'm so sorry about that, but it will just work when you when you do it. And if not, I will help you to to fix it. Um, I think that's everything. And now we're gonna uh, show you some exercises. So if you want, you can stop the recording. Uh, Alice. Okay, so welcome to the, um, yeah, let's continue with the session about data download, uh, advanced, let's say, because it's more advanced than what we saw in the WhatsApp one. So this, yeah, this uh, session is about uh, data download. Uh, so if we take a look at the, um, work at the workflow. Uh, we have the initialization of V2, login, metadata download, and then data download. So it's, this is about that part. Uh, in the workshop one, uh, we saw and um, we did some exercises about about uh, how to download uh, data from the server. And this is what we saw. We saw that in the tracked entity module, we have the tracked entity instance downloader. Uh, that there, there was a method called download to trigger the download. And also that we could include some parameters, like for example, the limit 10, uh, which means that uh, we want to download tracked entity instances uh, up to 10. I mean, uh, we want to load only 10 tracked entity instances each time. And the same applies for events. In the event module, event downloader, we can include a limit. And for aggregated, we have the aggregated module that so far uh, has no parameters to that can be included. Uh, so this is the, the pretty basic. So now we are going to see more parameters because uh, the downloader uh, accepts a limit, to specify the limit, but also more more things. Like for example, uh, we can download tracked TV instances by UID. For example, in case you don't you don't want to download so many PIs in your device and you you prefer to search online and then download. When, when needed, uh, you can download by UID, uh, by program UID, in case you only want to download ATIs for a specific program, uh, by program status. For example, if you only care about active TIs, you don't care about completed, okay? So you can download only the active ones. Uh, the limit that we saw, uh, two more parameters that are related to the limit that are limit by program and limit by or unit. <clears throat> and they mean that uh, limit by program, uh, when limit by program is set to true, it means that the limit that we have specified in the limit uh, parameter, the limit applies by program. <clears throat> so it means that if we set a limit of 100, and we set limit by program true, that limit is per program. So we will have 100 per program. It's false, it is global. So 100 <coughs> in global. And the same logic for the transition unit. And then we have a um, parameter called overwrite, that it means that, uh, uh, that Anything that is coming from the server, uh, no matter the, the status of the data that you have in the device, 
that we are going to talk about that later. Uh, the data that is coming from the server overrides the data existing in your device. Um, by default, it's false, um, but it can be useful in some cases. For events, we have quite similar parameters by UID, by program, um, the limits, limit, uh, the, the property limit, and limit by program and by org unit. And, and also, uh, in order to minimize the amount of data that we download from the server, uh, the SDK uses the last updated property. And this is completely transparent for the application. You don't have to care about that. But it's important to, that you know that this property is being used and more or less how it works. Uh, so, uh, what the SDK does is uh, the SDK keeps track of the latest, uh, the last successful synchronization. And for example, if the last successful sync was yesterday at 10 p.m., uh, if, and we triggered a synchronization right now, uh, the SDK is going to include the last updated property set to yesterday at 10 p.m. It means that we only want to download the data from the server that has been modified after yesterday at 10 p.m. Um, and this is quite important because this reduces a lot the, the data that is downloaded. Um, <clears throat> and we have seen that uh, in the query, we can specify the program ID. And also the organization unit is relevant. Um, so there are some cases where the last updated property should be used and some cases where it shouldn't be used. So all that logic is handled by DSDK and you don't have to care about that. But it's important that, uh, to know that it's there. So now um, we are going to do uh, an exercise uh, about that. So yeah. Alice, you can stop the recording if you want. Okay, thank you. Um, so this session is about uh, the Android settings app, and this is uh, a web app. It's not an Android app. Um, because, yeah, we saw that um, in the SDK, you can modify some parameters to, to, the, to decide to download only 10 TIs, 100 TIs, and also by program, um, and, and also a few more things. But uh, these parameters are specified when you uh, develop the application when you and you compile the application. So once you have uh, compiled the APK and is in the field, uh, and the users are running the application, you cannot modify those, those parameters anymore. So the Android settings app uh, gives you a chance to be able to modify those parameters uh, in runtime, let's say. So this is uh, yeah related to data synchronization as well. And uh, this application, uh, what it does is uh, this application is a web app installed in the server. Uh, there you can specify some parameters to configure the data synchronization. And then the SDK is going to, to read these parameters in first place and then use these parameters to uh, parameterize the uh, data synchronization. So it means, for example, that you can have uh, a single application that behaves in a different way depending on the server uh, that connects to. So this is, for example, the case of the official Android application. The official Android application is just one application. It's the same application. But depending on the server, you can specify different parameters, and the app will behave in a different way. So uh, this application gives 
uh, some additional and remote control over the, the Android application. Uh, and these settings are, well, there are some settings that are, that are automatically consumed by the SDK. For example, the synchronization parameters uh, and others, for example, like uh, how often the application should synchronize. Okay, those parameters should be consumed by the by the application itself. Uh, you have here the links to the settings app documentation to the web app, and also to how to use the settings in the SDK. But uh, just to have a quick overview about these settings, um, we have uh, two types of settings so far. The general settings, that here you can specify things like, for example, if you want to encrypt the local database of the device. Uh, so if true, the local database of the device of all the devices that connect to the server is going to be encrypted. And the number of reserved values to download, we will talk about this on Thursday, I think. And also the uh, SMS settings, uh, because yeah, the, uh, the SDK uh, can synchronize data or well, can upload data using SMS. So, here you can specify the the configuration of the gateway, also the sender, and a few more things I think. Um, yeah, to to configure the SMS in the server, and also uh, coming in the next version, we have the Matomo configuration. That is uh, this is a platform um, for yeah to follow up the status of the application I don't know. yeah to, to know yeah uh, how many users are using the application to have to have some uh, statistics about the the use of the application in your server uh, also we have the synchronization settings uh, sec section here we can specify a few more things uh, for the synchronization of the data for example, for, for programs, we yeah, we can specify limits uh, in global. Also, we can specify limits per program, a different limit for each program. And we this is something we that we cannot do in the SDK. We use only the SDK. Also, TI is enrolled in a certain period or uh, that has been updated before a certain date. And also if it gives you, it gives, gives us uh, some additional control over the aggregated data that we want to download. Um, the SDK downloads by default a certain numbers of periods for each data set. Here we can specify uh, and configure the, the different the, the periods for the for each data set. For example, for this data set, I only want to download the last five periods, but for this one, I want uh, the ten last periods. I don't know things like that. Yeah, and this is what I said that um, the the great the great thing of uh, these settings is that uh, you can specify both the global settings and, and also the specific settings per program or per data set. That this is something that we, uh, that the SDK does not allow yet. Okay, so, uh, let's start with the exercise uh, and the demo as well. So, yeah, Alice, uh, can you stop the recording?